we've got a great show for you today. We're going right up the road to Mooresville, North Carolina to take a closer look at a team that began as a small family-operated endeavor in Texas, but soon evolved in one of the premier multi-team operations in NASCAR, Turner Motorsports. We're going to sit down with drivers Brad Sweet, Nelson P.K. Jr., Justin Allgaier, and James Buescher. But first, we need to talk to owner Steve Turner to find out his thoughts about this team on the rise. We've been in just about every series there is and sort of worked our way up. Every week we think we evolve, we evolve a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and we understand the way these cars run. Our truck program is second to none. I think we have the best truck program out there. I'm not, you know, our nationwide program, we're top five team every week, uh, but we got to get it to we a winner every week, and we will before the end of the year. Steve Turner has good reason to be confident in his team. In the last few years, Turner Motorsports has acquired some of the best young talent in racing to get behind the wheel of their nationwide and truck series rides, including NASCAR Sprint Cup driver Casey Kane. Casey's doing it because he loves it, and he's helping us sort of improve our program on our nationwide side. If you talk to him, he'll tell you from where we were at last year to where we're at today and the nationwide, it's 100% better. He gives me a lot of feedback. and. Uh, Anytime you, you've got somebody with his talent and you know you got his crew chief, you, you can go ask questions. Casey's really been a big help to our program. In January, Turner announced they would team up with Bill Elliott and Walmart to go cup racing this July in Daytona. While this is a huge step for the team, Turner is up for the challenge. It's scary in one sense, but the way we're handling it and the group we're, we're doing it with makes me feel like you know, I think we got a real good shot to go down there and be a top 10 car, if not win the thing. Uh, and that would be awesome. Uh, you know, we've never run a series that we've not won races in. Uh, so, if, you know, to go to Cup and, and to think going into it on day one that you're going to be a top team, top 10 team, that's a pretty big goal. But I really, truly believe, you know, we don't get caught up in the big one, we'll come out of there in top 10. Turner Motorsports has already had a taste of success at Daytona with this year's NextTerra Energy Resources 250, which Steve Turner claims as his proudest moment as team owner. We qualified one, two, three. Uh, that, was, that was pretty awesome. You know, and then we ran one, two, three a lot. We could make the switch, we got the teams to work together. Yeah, everybody shuffled us at the end and we knew it, but to be able to get three trucks, to work together for 80 laps of the race. Uh, we, you know, we, we could just about say, okay, you lead for a while, you lead for a while, you lead for a while. Uh, that, was, that was nice to see. And I knew then we had what it was gonna take to get those three trucks in the winter circle all year long because the drivers would work with each other, they would give, they would take. Uh, so it was pretty awesome to see that. So far, Steve Turner has seen a lot of success this season. The group of up-and-coming drivers he's put together have been winning combination of youth and talent. A combination which he feels is taking his organization to the next level. I like working with the younger drivers uh, that has a talent. Uh, as you see them going up the ladder, you can sort of feel like, well, I helped them get there. You know, and, and you learn a lot by working with younger drivers. And I feel like I can, we can run against Childress, we can run against Gibbs, we can run against anyone in the garage now. We definitely want to start winning championships. Uh, every, every team on it does, but we think we have the capability. When we return, we'll introduce to you some of the drivers of Turner Motorsports. Stay tuned. Year after year, Turner Motorsports pride themselves on finding the best new talent in racing, and this year is no different. They've brought an open wheel sensation in Brad Sweet to share the number 38 Great Clip Chevy in the NASCAR Nationwide Series with the man who put him on the map, Casey Kane. Though most are not surprised with Brad's progression, he tries to stay humble about his rapid success. Once I started racing sprint cars and stuff in Indiana, my goal then was just to be a you know, make a living racing, you know, whether it's sprint cars or midgets or whatever. There's not a lot of, you know, cars out there that were this kind of opportunities for a, a rookie driver. So it's, um, I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to get to 
get to work with Casey as well, you know, to have a cup driver in the car to show what it's capable of doing as well as to help it get better. So this is just you know, been a total bonus. It's only fitting that Casey and Brad should team up on the number 38. Brad Sweet has been running sprint cars for Casey Kane Racing since 2008, when Casey personally gave him the opportunity that he could only have dreamt of when he started. Coming up, Jeff Gordon, you know, and then Tony Stewart, and then Casey, all from kind of the sprint car background, so they were always guys that we watched, and, um, you know, it was just a dream. I when I got into USAC stuff, I didn't really think it would become a reality just because there were so many kids with so much money and it, like I kind of didn't have that backing from my parents and stuff where some of them did and it just seemed like it was going to be really hard and uh, you know I don't believe if I ever would have you know got hired by Casey that I would be in the same situation. He's helped me you know get to this point and believed in me so that's you know how I've gotten here and He's, he's been really involved, he's excited. He, you know, he loves Great Clips as, as much as anybody and, and excited that you know, we're, we're off to a good start and he's had a lot of good runs so far this year and, and I've been there listening to every word he says. So you know, we're, uh, we're in it together and you know, we're just having fun. This new opportunity with Turner has been huge for Brad's racing career. And while making the jump from USAC to NASCAR has not been easy, Brad Sweet feels that every week brings a new understanding of what he has to do to keep this momentum going. Each and every time that you do it, you learn a ton, and, and you, when you get around cars, you understand where you're losing, where you're gaining, and uh, what it takes, you know, to be fast. So um, it's been a huge learning curve. It's it's very hard, and it's very hard to jump in to any car and be competitive with some with people that do it every each and every weekend. So. You know, that's been challenging a little bit, you know, missing a weekend here and missing a weekend there. But as long as I'm there and I, I stay, you know, communicating with the team, I feel pretty good every time I get in. So, you know, it's it's learning. I'm getting closer for sure in understanding what I'm looking for, but I still don't think I know it exactly. And it definitely helps when we unload really close and then we don't have to make major changes. But, you know, we're getting better at it for sure. Justin Allgaier has been racing his entire life, starting in quarter midgets at five years old and moving through various series until he landed in ARCA by age 16. By 23, he had a ride in the Nationwide Series with Penske Racing, but made the switch to Turner last season, where he feels he's gotten back to his roots of racing with his family. You know, when I, when I was racing for my dad, you know, growing up, and, and especially in the ARCA Series, to try and put um, a shoestring budget together and, and know what was in our shop. And, and my dad was always really, really smart at figuring out how to, how to get the stuff we needed but not spend extra dollars and, and not waste money. Now I come to a place like here at Turner Motorsports where I'm very successful, um, great sponsors on board, but at the same time, they've got a lot of the same outlook that my dad had is, how do we make the best equipment we possibly can and, and do it as budget conscious as we can because obviously the, the economy is not what it once was and, and you know there's race teams all over the place that, that uh, are, are spending the money but don't necessarily have the same results as a team like here at Turner Motorsports where they may not spend the most money but we're gonna get the we're gonna maximize the results out of the equipment that we have. And it's a cool it's a cool feeling to go to the racetrack and know that you may not be out dialing everybody but you're definitely out racing them. Justin has definitely had experience with the other side of the equation, with his first NASCAR exposure coming from a team like Penske. And though he feels right at home now, Justin admits that making the switch to Turner was somewhat of a leap of faith in the beginning. When I was at Penske Racing, um, there was a lot, of, a lot of people that said, well, you've, you've been in the best equipment you can possibly get in, and, and you ran good, but let's see what happens when you're not here. And not that I ever wanted to try it, but unfortunately, you know, when, when circumstances changed, I came somewhere else. And, and probably my biggest fear in, in all of, of my racing has been, you know, can, can I compete? And, and am I going to be in the right situation to compete? Um, you know, there's days that, that we struggle here at Turner Motorsports. I mean, at plain and simple, we, we struggle. But at the same time, we're able to run up front. We, we did win a race to Chicago Land last year. To just know that we've been able to make that transition and, and run almost equally as well really feels good. Success on the racetrack is always a key to the driver's satisfaction with the organization he represents. But this season, Justin has found satisfaction with his duties off the track in a way that he never has before. You know, the, the marketing side for me this year has been been the most fun of, of 
in my entire racing career because the, the folks from Brandon have, have brought a lot of different guests from a lot of different countries, um, from all different parts of the United States. They're trying to, uh, you know, grow things in, in other countries that people have said is, is not possible. Um, and, and, you know, branch right along there with them, trying to help them drive, drive their, um, their agriculture needs. And we have an, an entirely ag-based car, and, and it's, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but at the same time, we've got some great partners, fun to represent, fun to be a part of their, their programs. And, and uh, you know, hopefully as we move forward, we'll, we'll keep gaining partners like that and, and uh, keep that relationship going. While representing his sponsors has brought much joy to Allgaier this season, his performance on the racetrack thus far has not been quite what he expected. But with over half the season still ahead, Justin remains optimistic about the possibilities that the number 31 will achieve moving forward. There's bright spots everywhere. You know, we, we've got a lot to be proud of and, and uh, we're still moving forward. We're, we're, we're probably pushing as hard now as we ever have. And uh, I feel like that, that you know, as, as we get going here and get some momentum building into the season, we'll, we'll, we'll have a really good shot at not only winning races, but you know, hopefully uh, you know, gaining some of those points back and going for the championship. From the time he was 12 years old, James Buescher was winning races and championships in his home state of Texas. After jumping into the seat of fellow Texas native Steve Turner's ASA late model ride back in 2006, Buescher has been moving up the stock car ranks with Turner Motorsports ever since. In 2012, he's competing for a Camping World Truck Series championship, and he feels like he's definitely paid his dues to get to this point. I was involved in building the team I don't have a veteran crew chief. Michael Shelton's first crew chiefing job at NASCAR is the 31 truck. And uh, so my first truck series win was also his first truck series win as crew chief. We grew together in building Turner Motorsports and building the 31 team. And uh, I think it's just the evolution of, of how long it takes to, to be successful in this sport. And uh, it's not just you know show up and, and win your race the first week out with two guys that haven't been doing it very long and, and uh, a team owner that hasn't been in the garage very long. So I feel like it's been a really short period of time to be as successful as we are. And uh, you know, I, I hope to keep improving on it. You know, it, it just seems like I know what I want more. Um, Michael Shelton knows what to give me more. We know what, we, we work together better uh, than, than we have in the past. And I, I just, I think it's just, experience for both of us and uh, having time to, to build the equipment to what it needs to be and uh, to be successful. With all the time he's put in on track to build success within his team, James Buescher has high hopes for where he wants to take his career. Uh, the goals for this year is to win more truck races, win more nationwide races, and, and win the truck championship. If we don't win another race, that's fine as long as we win the truck championship this year. So uh, I feel like I could win it. 90% of them probably. Um, there's places that I might not be completely comfortable with or, or places that Shelton and I haven't quite figured out yet, but I haven't seen it yet this year. So, I mean, we've, we've ran really well every race. Um, I'd say that I'd say our 31 team's as good as it's ever been, and uh, hopefully we, we keep getting better. We've been doing testing even since Kansas that we feel like we've found some things that, that can help us for the future. So, uh, you know, I think we have equipment capable to win more races. Uh, we've shown that we're strong on every style of racetrack this year. But as far as the next three years, I'd say if I win the championship this year, I'd, I'd like to be able to compete for a championship next year in the Nationwide Series. Um, if uh, sponsorship is available to do that, then that's that's probably what we'll do. But I think everything's kind of sponsor dependent for the next couple of years. But um, you know, we've got great sponsors this year to do what we plan to do with and uh, you know, I think we have what we need to, to achieve our goals for 2012 and then we focus on 2013, 14 and so on. James Buescher definitely has all the tools he needs to attain the goals he set for himself and he has good reason to believe that he'll reach them. At only 22 years of age, his career thus far has seen big achievements that he's very proud of. My first ARCA start was my first ARCA win so that was a pretty big one for me. It all happened really fast and I didn't really know what it meant at the time. But I'd say like winning ARCA race at Daytona and winning the nationwide race at Daytona, those two stick out a lot. Um, and, and winning the truck race like we did at Kansas, being able to be dominant all day long and, uh, 
and, and not just have it fall our way. You know, we, we earned it, and uh, I think that one's going to be a, a good memory for a long time. Perhaps James' proudest moment came off track when he married his longtime sweetheart, Chris Turner, the daughter of his team owner, Steve. Which begs the question, what's it like to race for your father-in-law? I mean, it, it's, it's hard to explain exactly how it works, but, uh, you know, him and I have been doing this for so long uh, that, that we just understand each other and, and how we how we need to what we need to do to get the job done whether it's at home or at, at the racetrack and uh, you know when we're in the garage it's he's my boss he's my car owner and when we're back in the motorhome lot yeah we can talk about the racing and him being my boss and, and my car owner but he's my father-in-law so uh, I think we know when to change our hats and, and uh, when not to. With motor racing in his blood, it's no surprise that Nelson Piquet has had success in both the open wheel and stock car ranks. The son of three-time world champion Nelson Piquet, Nelson Jr. was the youngest driver to win the British F3 title and decided in 2010 to bring his talents to the U.S. and try his hand at NASCAR. A transition that has been a challenge to adapt to both on and off the track. It's not being very easy. I mean, obviously, I'm starting to blend into the culture into the people. Obviously um, I was lucky enough that English was my first language was my mother so I think that was that's a barrier that I that I didn't have here. All the racing kind of different words that they use uh, I'm still picking it up slowly. I mean imagine somebody else coming from a normal English class in Brazil and then coming over here they, they won't understand a word so I think that was that's something that helped me a lot. I understood in my head that coming over here I would have to start from zero again and uh, on the learning basis, you know, I would have to really start from zero and learn really the basics over here of racing because obviously handling, I have the handling from all, the, all these years I've been driving, but the different rules, the different kind of racing, the way the car is heavy, you know, the power, ovals, I've never driven an oval before, so all of this I've been learning slowly and slowly. Coming from an open wheel background, one might have assumed that Nelson would come to America in search of a career in IndyCar. However, that just didn't seem to be enough of a test for him to travel all this way. I didn't see enough of a challenge over there, you know. There were full of Brazilians already, you know. It was, uh, it was something normal for any Brazilian to leave Europe and go over there after they, you know, gave up on their career over there or something. And I just thought that I wanted something different, something more difficult and, and that nobody had done before, you know. And no Brazilians have ever won any races in NASCAR. So I won my first K&N race and I'm about to win any time my first truck race and then I'm going to fight for the championship and we're going to go on until we reach cup. I want to be the first Brazilian to to open this pass to conquer all of this the same way Emerson did with Indy cars for the Brazilians and then all the Brazilians are going to Indy cars. I think that there is a there's a good chance that me doing this um, can lead to a lot of talent from Brazil to come over to America. And when his fellow Brazilian drivers follow in his footsteps to make the leap to stock car ovals, Nelson says they need to prepare themselves for some intense racing. Every corner is like a battle, you know, you put the car sideways and you're fighting from the, end, from the start of the corner to the end of the corner and you're this much of the wall coming in and this much going out and you have to use as much track as you can. And, when you're running all the way high up the track is something I love to do and something which a lot of spotters and a lot of guys say I picked up very well is, is running this much from the wall, you know, all the way up in the corner the whole time. And I really, I really enjoy doing that. I know a lot of drivers don't do it, but it's something I, I feel, I don't know, I just like driving high into the corner, close to the wall, something fun. and. Uh, and there's all these little things I'm going to pick up and I'm sure when I get to Cup I'll be much more prepared than if I had spent three years there getting my ass beat every weekend and not knowing what was going on than if I get there with a good baggage and knowing everything I've learned and winning races and championships and knowing that if I sit in a good car I'll be able to deliver a good result. Nelson Piquet seems to have a good plan in place to succeed in NASCAR which is built on patience and reason a plan that he intends to stick to no matter what advice he gets from his peers. A lot of people keep bugging me that I need to go to Nationwide, Nationwide, but uh, I think not. I think I need to take step by step. I want to first win my truck race and, uh, and be 
fighting for the championship and, and then I'll say okay now I'm ready for nationwide and that's what I'm gonna do you know I'm not gonna you're not gonna see me racing cup very soon unless I win the truck championship this year and the nationwide next year then I'll be there in two years but I don't think that's really what's gonna happen you know it's gonna take me you know we're gonna try to win the truck championship this year and then it's gonna take me two years to win a nationwide championship with the right team and everything in place hopefully um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I think I'm doing the, the correct, the correct uh, path and being patient. And others are not as patient, maybe, and uh, gave up or thought, thought this wasn't good enough for them. I don't know. Well, it looks like Nelson is on the right path. Less than seven days after we conducted this interview, he completed step one of his plan with a win at Road America. Another victory in a long string of success for Turner Motorsports. That's all the time we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed our visit to Turner, and we hope you'll tune in next week for more Three Wide Action. Until then, make sure to visit our website for more behind-the-scenes content, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Until next week, keep on living the Three Wide Life.